Good morning, Sophia. This is my fabulous videographer as we film these stories during the coronavirus. And yay, we have some beautiful weather right over the rooftops right there. That's a little peak of Lake Arrowhead. Wanted you to see that. And also, my daffodils are not going to last very long and we have so many beautiful daffodils. We also have our Easter rose or Easter Linton plant right there and um, they last a lot longer. So I thought today we would read our story out here where the daffodils are blooming and look at this plant right here. Do you see that? Those are lilacs and they need a trimming. They need a haircut just like me. But I went ahead and um, let them grow out this year and now they're getting purple blooms. I'm just gonna turn this camera around And Sophia is going to record today's story. This is a book from my classroom when I taught third grade. And it was even before I knew I was going to have a wonderful daughter-in-law, Ira from Ukraine, who speaks Russian. And Sophia, our videographer, she also speaks Russian. So that's pretty cool. And on the back of my book, there's a recipe for Catherine the Great's borscht. Nobody makes borscht better than my daughter-in-law, Irina. But let's see what this book is all about. It was a big favorite in my third grade class. Long time ago. Look at her. She looks like such a nice little babushka. Well, there's a page and it says, my grandma came to America from Russia a long time ago on a big boat with a little suitcase three little children, Aunt Sonia, Aunt Nina, and Anna, my mama, a little grandpa, and no English. The man who stamped her passport couldn't say her name, Ekaterina, so he called her Catherine. Then she had a little English, too. This is the story of how I gave her more. It is the early blue of Grandma's birthday morning when Mama leaves for work. See you at the party, Sarah, she whispers with a kiss. Nellie, the downstairs dog, is barking at Mr. Minsky's all-night cat. And Monica's dad is drying her hair. Upstairs, Mr. Minsky's toes are tapping on our ceiling, and Mary Caruso is singing opera to her crybaby, Mimo. An alphabet moon left over from the nighttime sky makes me sing, too. A silly C for Catherine's song, so loud and low, I have to muffle my giggles, but there is no need. Looks like they live in a big apartment building in New York City with people above them and below them and next to them on both sides. It's like a big family. Catherine the Great was my Russian grandma, and she was already awake. Outside my window, I hear her humming something Russian while she shakes out her laundry, picks up a clothespin, and hangs the wash to dry. Then look what I see. Grandma's underpants all in a row, as big as tents and as loud as six firecrackers on the 4th of July. Let them shout all over the neighborhood, she says in Russian, happy birthday to me. Sophie, can you say happy birthday in Russian, please? Uh, I think. Thank you. It's written here in Russian, but I can't read it. Tonight, when Mama comes home, we'll have a Borscht and Blintz's party for Grandma. A party with no presents. Last week, Grandma announced, this year for my birthday, I want no presents. How do you say no? Sophie. Yet. Yet presents. I have music in my Russian bones and laughing in my heart. I have the day and the night and I have all of you. And that's why for me the best present will be no present. At first everybody was surprised. No presents, Mr. Minsky wondered. No presents, Mary Caruso sang. No presents, Mimo cried. No presents, Monica asked her dad. Yes. Da, no presents, answered Mama, nodding her head and smiling. How can Grandma have a birthday party with no presents, I asked. How can nothing be something? 
Then Mama told me, a good no present can be anything from a kiss or a hug to a game of gin rummy, as long as it comes from deep inside you. Finally, I understood. One thing was certain though, any no present for Grandma had to be great, just like she was. For an entire week, I watched her making vegetable soup for Monica and her dad. She saved the bone for Nelly, Playing Ladushki, a Russian clapping song with Mimo, so he wouldn't cry. I remember Ira playing that with you, Sophie, when you were a baby. Do you remember her playing it with Alice? Um, Little clapping game? I think... Well, now that you say it, I think I'm starting to remember it. Yeah, I remember her saying Ladushki. Picking peaches for Mr. Minsky and baking a special sardine pie for his cat. Grandma even had time to play gypsy dress up with me and listen to all my poems like this one. Oh, moony moon, up in the sky, you look like a piece of pie. If I eat you, one, two, three, your shiny, shiny, shiny will be in me. Maybe you like to make up silly poems. I do. But now it's the morning of Grandma's party, and I still haven't found the perfect no present for her. Oh, do you have one yet? I asked Monica and her dad. We're all set, they answered. Then I asked Mary Caruso. Mimi, too. She sings. I have something really special, says Mr. Minsky. And Eva Mama says, so have I, when I call her at work. I look in Grandma's kitchen, and in her room, on her dresser, Grandma has a row of saving jars with labels, all in Russian. One for prune jelly, one for pennies, one for candy, and one for buttons and little bits of leftover soap. There are bundles of Russian newspapers and a shelf full of her big fat Russian books. One book is by someone named Dostoyevsky. She has papers and letters and lists and notes all over her room. Grandma likes to write just like I do, but all her words are in Russian. I look at one of her papers and I turn it upside down and sideways to see if I can read it. I know I can't, but I try and I try. And then I do the next best thing. I write a poem on the back. Oh, if only Grandma could read this, I think. And right then I realize I have found exactly what I've been looking for. The perfect no present for Grandma. All afternoon, Grandma and I chop and shred and boil and simmer the borscht for the party. We fry and stuff and roll the blintzes. Does it say blintzes in Russian, Sophie? Blintzes? Blintzes? How do you say blintzes? Uh, I don't know what blintzes are. Is it a bellini? Bellini? There you go. Then we smell and sip and pinch and taste. We're good partners, aren't we? I asked Grandma in English, wiggling to the fast and happy sounds of her gypsy music. We sure are, my little Sarah, she answers in Russian. Can you say yes, we are in Russian? Da, we, uh, hmm. Yes. It's a little harder and because it's like to translate it. Yeah, because it's kind of switched. Because I hear you talking to your grandma and great grandma in Russian every single morning on FaceTime, so I know you know a lot of words. Then Mama comes home, and one by one, our guests begin arriving. I hear there's a party here tonight, laughs Mr. Minsky, for the most beautiful birthday girl in the world. Oh, something smells delicious, sings Mary Caruso. Woof, barks Nelly, looking for Mr. Minsky's cat. I can't wait to taste everything, whispers Monica. I'm hungry for borscht. And then we do. Our compliments to the chef, everyone says, and Grandma and I bow together. Looks like it was a hit. Mary Caruso and Mimo are next. Catherine, I would like to sing you your very favorite love song. I have learned all the Russian words myself and Mimo has promised not to cry. And now it's time for the no presents announced Mr. Minsky taking charge. Boy, does grandma look surprised. 
First are Monica and the dad. Their no present is a fine and fancy hairdo fit for a queen or a Russian empress. Look at grandma's fancy hairdo. What a great no present. Now for Mr. Minsky. May I have this dance, Catherine? He asks, holding out his arms. Mr. Minsky has brought a waltz. He knows that grandma loves to dance. Then it's mama's turn. I came home early today just so I could fix up your room and look what I found behind the dresser. It's our coming to America picture, she says. The one with you and your little suitcase, Sonia, Nina, and me. And grandma adds, sending mama a great big blowy kiss, our little grandpa. Suddenly, everyone is looking at me. I keep my hands in my pocket and I take a deep breath. Here I go. Grandma, the passport man gave you a little English when he called you Catherine, but I want you to have a lot. My no present is to teach you to read and write English. No one says a word. Uh-oh, I think. Then Grandma laughs. To read and to write English after all these years? I think now I'm ready. And right then and there, she takes out the poem I wrote this morning in her room. Please read this to me, she says, and so I do. I have a grandma sailed here on a boat, arrived with no money or a warm winter coat. Her Russian's a secret, a dark mystery. She speaks the same language as Dostoyevsky. If she invites you, don't ever come late. You'll miss having blintzes with Catherine the Great. Mr. Minsky is the first to clap. Three cheers for Catherine the Great, he shouts, and for Sarah the Great too, and then everyone claps. Mama brings out the birthday pie and we all sing some more. It is the dark blue of night after Mama has read me a story Nellie, the downstairs dog, is snoring. He doesn't hear Mr. Minsky's cat, who has just sneaked out. Mary Caruso is singing quiet opera to Mimo, and Mr. Minsky's toes are all tapped out. Grandma has just had a bath with some of the leftover soap from one of her jars. Oh, today I'm as old as all the numbers on the clock added together, she tells me. I know how she feels. You'll never be too old for me, I say, getting a smile, a kiss, and a place on her lap. Oh, I love Grandma's knees and her cheeks and the sound of her Russian. You are my Sarah forever and always, she says. And then I notice the moon. Look, Grandma, I say, the moon is the letter C, C for Catherine. I write Grandma's name in English, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E. Tonight, the moon is a Russian letter, too, Grandma says. The, it is C for Sarah. Grandma writes my name in Russian. And it's a funny looking letters. Can you read Russian, Sophie? Um, kind of. Little bit? A little. I watch Grandma's pencil go up and down, and I promise myself that I will practice writing my Russian name every single day. And maybe Grandma will teach me more. Then Grandma and I look at each other and smile, knowing that sometimes no presents can be the best presents of all. You no, know, Sophie, I remember how to say pajalsta. That's hello, right? Uh, that's please. That's please. Wait, privyet. Uh huh. Privyet is how to say hello, good morning. How do I say goodbye in Russian? So, uh, baka. Baka, that's right. Baka, everyone. Love you. Bye-bye.